This is Mac OS Ken. Apple dances around the three trillion line. Nefarious apps kicked off the App Store in India. And the high price of Johnny Ive design. It is Monday, the 10th of July, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Use code MacOSCAN50 at factormeals.com slash MacOSCAN50 for 50% off your first box. This show is also sponsored by Issue, the all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital content. If you're already putting out newsletters, catalogs, magazines, sales pitches, if you're putting those things out but feel like they could use a little something, Issue could be that something. Issue lets you turn your flat PDFs into interactive digital publications and social posts for everyone and across a number of platforms. Embed the content on your site, send it out as an email, put it up on the socials. With Issue, you can create once and share everywhere. Issue helps you hit the platforms you're trying to hit with the tools you already know. Folding seamlessly with Dropbox, InDesign, MailChimp, and more. Get started with Issue today for free. Or sign up for an annual premium account and get 50% off when you go to issue.com slash podcast and use promo code MacOSCAN. That's I-S-S-U-N. U.com slash podcast and use promo code MacOSCAN at checkout for your free starter account or 50% off an annual premium account. That's issue.com slash podcast with promo code MacOSCAN. Wailing and gnashing of teeth and what have you. Apple has closed below $3 trillion. It was a little over a week ago that the Cupertino company's valuation moved above $3 trillion, a level it hadn't seen in about a year and a half. Bigger than that, though, it stayed there. While the company's intraday high in early 2022 did go above 3 t it closed below that, then fell and fell and fell all the way back down to around $2 trillion at the start of this year. The shares have been on a steady climb since. And now, this horrible, horrible news that really doesn't mean anything. The piece from Barron says Apple needs a share price of $190.73 to have a $3 trillion valuation. Shares closed Friday at $190.68 leaving Apple with a market cap of $2.999 trillion. And there was much wailing and gnashing of teeth and what have you. Apple's kicked some pretty horrible-sounding people out of the App Store in India. TechCrunch says the Cupertino company has nixed several predatory lending apps from the App Store in the subcontinent. Or on it. It's unclear whether it was the business terms or the way the terms were enforced that got them banned. According to the report, the apps offered fast-track lending to consumers in India, climbing to the top 20 of the financial list on the App Store in recent weeks. But they also levied outrageously superfluous charges, according to hundreds of user reviews. That is icky, but it gets much worse. To make sure that the borrowers made payments, the app operators were allegedly using blackmail. According to one user review, I borrowed an amount in a helpless situation and a day before repayment due date, I got some messages with my PIC and my contacts in my phone saying that repay your loan, otherwise they will inform our contacts that you are not paying loan. Another person says one lender was threatening the borrower with deep fake nudes. Like if the borrower didn't pay, the lender would send porn pics with the face of the borrower superimposed to the borrower's contacts. 
Whether the predatory lending or the threats of blackmail would have been enough to get the apps booted is unclear, though straight up lying to Apple will apparently do it. The report says Apple confirmed to TechCrunch that it had removed the apps, saying they violated the app developer program license agreement and guidelines. The apps were also falsely representing an association with a financial institution, according to Apple's findings. Apple's Shazam app can now identify tracks playing in other applications. TechCrunch ran a piece last week saying, in addition to recognizing songs using the microphone, Shazam can now identify songs on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. It's not seamless, but could still be helpful. To ID a song in one of the aforementioned applications, Apple says users need to open the Shazam app, tap the Shazam button in the app, then go back to the app where the music was playing, pick up where you left off, and Shazam does its thing. Now, I tried it, and it is even less seamless than I thought. I assumed Shazam would pop a message on the screen, maybe, you know, like a pop-up or a push notification, letting you know what the song is while you watch whatever video. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Rather, the mic indicator comes on when you go back to the app and stays on until it identifies the track. Once it's done that, you can go back to the Shazam app and find out what the track was. Far from seamless, still potentially useful. It even saves the track info in the Shazam app, so that's cool. Shazam is a free application. You can find it now in the App Store. Be careful if you pull a Fonzie with emoji. A judge in Canada says a simple thumbs up could be legally binding. Engadget highlights a piece from The Guardian saying, a Canadian judge has ruled that the popular thumbs up emoji not only can be used as a contract agreement, but is just as valid as an actual signature. The Saskatchewan-based judge made the ruling on the grounds that the courts must adapt to the new reality of how people communicate. Yeah, totally. Which I'm afraid is now also legally binding, maybe. Could explain why people say things like, yeah, no, and no, yeah. I really don't understand how this case happened. According to Engadget, a grain buyer sent out a mass text to a group of people that included a farmer. The buyer also texted the contract to the farmer asking the farmer to confirm receipt of the contract. The farmer confirmed receipt with a thumbs-up emoji. When prices changed on the commodity in question, and Gadget says the farmer backed out of the deal, stipulated in a contract the farmer did not sign. This is the part where I get confused. The farmer says they didn't review the contract and use the thumbs-up to acknowledge receipt of the contract. But Engadget says the buyer sued the farmer, arguing that the thumbs up represented more than just receipt of the contract. It represented an agreement to the conditions of the contract, and a judge agreed, ordering the farmer to cough up nearly $62,000. The piece goes on to say that the judge relied on Dictionary.com's definition of the emoji, which notes the image is used to express assent, approval, or encouragement in digital communications, especially in Western countries, ultimately siding with the grain buyer. Yeah, no. More news in a moment, but first a word from Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and sponsor of today's show. I don't know about you, but I've got more stuff to do this summer than other times of the year more stuff I want to do. But how does one spend less time planning meals, shopping, cooking? Factor is a great way to avoid that hassle and eat great too. Just 10 minutes in the oven or two minutes in the microwave lets you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals. With Factor, speed and convenience don't trump quality and nutrition. From calorie smart to keto to protein plus to vegan plus veggie, Factors meals are prepared by chefs, approved by dietitians, and delivered to your door ready for the oven. Their meals are fresh, never frozen. 
That's how Factor is ready so fast, while tasting so fantastic. The quality of their proteins always impresses me, and their sauces, and their sides. I'll tell you about some of my favorites this week, but for now, find some favorites of your own. Head to factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 and use code macOSCan50 to get 50% off. That's code macOSCan50 at factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 to get 50% off. Taste what has made Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Use code macOSCan50 for 50% off at factormeals.com slash macOSCan50. What did I say about Apple last week? Yeah, I know, I said a lot of stuff about Apple last week. The one I'm thinking of, though, is the one where Season 2 of Foundation starts this Friday, and Apple does not want you to forget it. Last week, that was about the new trailer Apple released for the show's second season. This week, Foundation is pulling a sort of silo. Ahead of the latter show's season finale, Apple posted its premiere episode on Twitter. Similarly, a report from 9to5Max has Apple is posting the first episode of the first season of Foundation on YouTube. The YouTube offering comes with bonus material. It's unclear exactly how it's going to work, though it is interesting. Not only is Apple showing the nearly two-year-old episode, it's also hosting a live Q&A with showrunner David Goyer. I say it's unclear exactly how it's going to work because it's unclear exactly how it's going to work. The show's placeholder on YouTube encourages potential viewers to watch the first episode of Foundation Season 1 as executive producer and showrunner David S. Goyer answers your questions live. So, interview then view or view then interview? Folks can find out live today... The show and Q&A combo is set to hit YouTube today at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And finally today, remember when Johnny Ive used to make things for people? Like, lots and lots and lots of people? It's fine that he doesn't, but he really doesn't anymore. 9 to 5 Mac has the story of the Lynn turntable designed by Apple's former design lead... Lynn's products are already pretty pricey. The piece says the company's first ever product was the hand-built Sondek LP-12. Still made today, that goes for between $4,700 and $31,000. I say still made today because the company is celebrating its 50th anniversary, which is where Sir Johnny comes in. 9to5Max says Johnny Ives' Love From Design Consultancy has designed a special edition of this, the LP12-50. Changes include replacing plastic hinges and a plastic knob with aluminum and adding curved lines where once hard lines and angles existed. Doesn't sound anything like him. Still handmade, the LP-1250 is very limited edition. There were, or are, only 250 in production. They will run buyers $60,000, assuming they can still be had. Of course, you can wait a few years and pay who knows how much more at auction. Kind of like that book I've designed of stuff he designed. Remember the book designed by Apple in California? Crazy expensive when it came out. It is now crazy-er expensive. If you don't remember, Cult of Mac says, I've created the picture book to showcase Apple designs during his tenure as head of the industrial design team from the iMac in 1998 through Apple Pencil in 2015. One might expect a book like that to be pricey, though it actually sold for... Are you serious? Come on, prices. A small edition of the book sold for $199, 
while the design by Apple and California Pro model sold for $299. They didn't really call it that, but it would have been funny if they had. Anyway, Apple discontinued the book in 2019, so, you know, Q eBay on Twitter. Basic Apple Guy has posted a few auctions for the book. They are currently sitting at buy it now prices that range from 850 bucks to somewhere around 2000. Mac OS Ken brought to you by me and sponsored by Issue. Get 50% off an annual premium account with code MacOS Ken at ISSUU issue.com slash podcast this show is also sponsored by factor america's number one ready to eat meal kit use code macos can five zero at factormeals.com slash macos can five zero for 50 percent off your first box Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways, info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macoscan. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.